You did it, guys. Not only did you survive an international pandemic, record inflation, and the ongoing threat of nuclear war, you somehow managed to graduate and wiggle your way into yet another four-year academic institution. And now, after pretending to have hobbies, consuming enough caffeine to turn a mouse into a dog, and grinding to the top of the social hierarchy, it's time to do it all over again. But don't worry, I, Kevin, your virtual older brother, am here to guide you. In fact, the whole point of our channel and the ethos of this educational company I co-founded, The Elevated School, is to help guide you guys from high school into college and then from college to the real world. There is so, so much I can't wait to teach you guys in the coming months and years. And honestly, all I ask for in return is a simple like. If you're feeling ultra inspired, a kind comment would make my day. In this video, I'm going to give you guys college tips that no one else on the internet has mentioned yet. And trust me, because I did my research and watched like 20 videos on this topic. It will be long, but it will be worth it. We're gonna break this bad boy down into two sections. The first will consist of three actionable, life-changing tips. And in the second, I'll run you guys through a semester by semester, year by year playbook of what you should be doing and when you should be doing it. Let's begin. When it comes to alcohol-filled festivities, my advice is to choose your parties tactically. Knock yourself out for a month or two, drink responsibly, have fun, but also understand that it takes a stupid amount of stamina to be drinking two or three times a week and then dance or even just stand until one or two in the morning. This is simply not a normal thing that human beings are designed to do or sustain for months at a time, especially when you add academic stress into the equation. So don't feel bad if in October or November, all you wanna do is curl up in bed, sip on some hot cocoa and eat a pizza. Honestly, probably more than half the people on campus are feeling just like you. This might just be my personal opinion, but I think the world would be a better place if for every college party we had, there was also one chill vibes night where people just got together, baked cookies and shared their life stories around a cozy fire. You'll also notice that after your first semester, there's just gonna be a crazy drop in the number of people attending parties. Yeah, sure, there will still be major events like Spring Fling where it feels like everyone and their mom is at a darty, but for the most part, people just start tapering off. If you're an introvert or perhaps an ambivert like me, someone who needs to recharge after socializing with a bunch of people, I recommend picking one event to show up for once a month. Then find other low energy, more nurturing events that still build community. And if you can't find any, host one. Get people together, cook, watch a movie, play some Settlers of Catan or Animal Crossing. Yeah, it sounds lame and cheesy at first until you realize this is exactly how upperclassmen are spending their time. On the alcohol note, I would like to offer one final Final serious warning. Every fall semester in the history of ever, there are freshmen on campus who just get so drunk they become a physical danger to themselves and others. Projectile vomiting and having to get your stomach pumped is not cute. Don't let that be you. But also don't let that be a friend or even an acquaintance. Step up guys, make sure that you're safe and the people around you are safe too. It's as simple as checking in and asking, hey, you good? You want some water? But trust me when I say that those two simple questions could save someone's life. Tip number two study abroad. I did and met my fiance. Now, I know you guys just got into college, but listen to me when I say, get your butt off campus. There are so many ways to study abroad, and the best part about college is that you can do it 100% for free. COVID is over, guys. Take advantage. Now, I'm not going to break down the study abroad process into 16, 17,000 granular steps, since every single university is different. That's your job. What I will say and encourage you to do is start asking around and develop an awareness for what fellowships and programs enable you to travel for free. In fact, I'd encourage you to go one step further and start organizing them, jotting them down in a spreadsheet. Some of these travel opportunities might be unique to your major, while others might be available to anyone at your school. Some might even come from an outside organization, but regardless of where the opportunity comes from, most will typically ask you to fill out an application between November and January. Plan accordingly. While other people are stressing about exams or catching up on sleep during winter break, I want you to handcuff yourself to your desk and apply to at least three opportunities 
And if you're feeling super duper ambitious, go for five or 10. There's a snowball effect in play here, guys. Meaning the more of these you apply to, the easier it gets. Let's say you don't get into them your first try, but you reapply your sophomore, junior year. You're more than twice as likely to get it then. Personally, I recommend studying abroad for an academic semester. Here's why. For some reason, no one else on the internet has mentioned this before, but studying abroad is a huge GPA boost. The thing is, most foreign schools don't have serious midterms or finals and their classes just tend to be far easier for exchange students. So while other folks are stuck on campus their sophomore year just complaining about exams, you'll be happily exploring nomming on some gnocchi in Italy or sipping some caipirinhas in Brazil, living your best life. Story time. I met my now fiance during an ISEC work abroad program in the summer between my first and second year of college. I was doing the most random work imaginable, developing marketing materials for hemophiliacs in the region while she was volunteering with kids at a local enrichment program. We overlapped for four weeks in Salta, Argentina of all places and the spark was electric. But then uh, school started and I still had three more years until I graduated and it just became too difficult to sustain this long distance relationship. So we lost touch for two and a half years. <laughs> Fast forward to the spring of 2020 and Ingra, my fiance, messages me out of the blue. I was in the middle of break dancing in my living room and she hits me with this question, do you still remember us? After talking again every night, the spark was reignited and I decided to move to Brazil in the middle of the pandemic. We lived together in an Airbnb by the ocean. We hit it off and a year and a half ago, she got a job in DC, which is where we live together now. Finally, a few months ago, I convinced her that we were going on a picnic to the Kennedy Center and I got down on one knee, proposed to her and she said yes which was awesome. I couldn't be happier. We couldn't be happier. Enough about my personal life though. Let's go back to college tips. Tip number three, and I can't emphasize this enough. Take a gap year. Taking a gap year is the number one. I repeat, the number one cheat code you can do in college. Not only can it serve as a much needed break to prevent burnout, but you can also use it to travel, like I mentioned earlier, or unlock once in a lifetime opportunities like internships at really prestigious firms. The beauty of the gap year is that you don't have to compete with a host of other students for limited opportunities in the summer. You can just swim against the current and work in the fall or winter at a super dope firm while everyone else is still studying or in school. Also, it's a year, meaning in 12 months, guys, you can do anything and everything. My best friend from high school, Hiro, traveled to more than a dozen countries during his gap year. He worked a physical job chopping down overgrown shrubs with some nature conservation group in Hawaii then headed to Tokyo and worked at a venture capital firm. I was so jealous. Honestly, I'm still kind of jealous. Another girl I knew worked in a barbecue restaurant in the South as a pit master for three months, then took a hardcore coding boot camp for three months, then interned at a law firm for three months, then traveled and backpacked across Europe for her last three months. A final word of advice. This is very, very important. While most people opt to take a gap year between high school and college or between their first and second year, I think the best time to take one is actually between your sophomore and junior year. This is because a lot of companies are rather hesitant to hire or bring on a young teenager with little work experience, but they're more open to working with undergraduates, particularly more seasoned ones with a few semesters under their belt. break and now moving on to the second part of this video the year by year breakdown how to do college right let's start with year one freshman year I wish someone had told me this when I first entered college join clubs if you don't want to die alone one of my biggest shocks was seeing how much of college social life at least American college social life is tied to the organizations and institutions that you're a part of bigger more established clubs even have funding for parties and major events for example, the Yale International Relations Association, one of the biggest clubs on campus, which I was a part of for two years, used to host these mega banquets in the spring, which if I had to guess, probably cost several tens of thousands of dollars. Of course, I didn't join to attend the banquets, but I'm just saying they don't hurt. When I visited my buddy at UPenn, he also took me to a dinner hosted by the DP. 
or the Daily Pennsylvanian, which is like their 100-year-old newspaper or something. And again, it was all fancy schmancy. Now that being said, there is perhaps even more power in joining small clubs. My main extracurricular in college was the Yale breakdance team. And although there were less than 10 of us, we were tight. I actually ended up rooming with these guys during my third and fourth year. And to this day, my very best college memories are attending jams with these guys, practicing with them at midnight on a Friday or Saturday, then playing Super Smash Bros and watching anime together. Ah, those were the good old days. But back to freshman year. Clubs are critical. And the thing that you should know is that the window to join many of them is actually very, very small. Usually, it's just in the first two weeks of school. And sometimes there's even an application or tryout or interview. After that, the next opportunity might not be until the following spring semester. And in the second half of the year, there are far fewer spots to fill. So clubs are even more competitive than in the fall. Basically, what I'm trying to say is keep those deadlines in mind. My recommendation, and you know, some of you might think this is a little bit controversial, but I'll say it anyways. I advise joining as many clubs as you possibly can. Then just drop the ones that you don't vibe with a few weeks in. This way, you'll be in a far better position than if you had done the opposite and joined too few clubs. You should also know that it's significantly more difficult to join clubs or frats or any organization really during your sophomore year compared to your freshman year. And joining clubs your junior year is practically unheard of since this is when most people actually lead clubs. Again, this was a huge shock to me because unlike high school where people are in charge of organizations their senior year, most leadership positions in college are actually held junior year. Moving on to year number two, sophomore year. At this point in time, the shiny newness of college has begun to wear off. All of a sudden, you wake up one day and you feel, well, jaded. You have all these forms to fill out and you're being forced to figure out what kind of major you wanna do and what kind of job you'll pursue post-college. If you have a clear idea of what you wanna do, perfect, fantastic, amazing. My most actionable advice at this point is to start pursuing internships and real life job opportunities related to your intended career. If you are seriously interested in turning art into a career and becoming a graphic designer, do whatever you can to work or intern at a design firm. If you wanna make a bunch of money on Wall Street, it's absolutely paramount that you secure a finance internship your sophomore year. Trust me when I say employers care far more about work experience than any clubs you were a part of or classes you took. Sure, there are a few exceptions, like if your club or team won some national or international title, or if you did some really knockout research as part of a class you took. But generally speaking, an internship, particularly a paid internship, is the best extracurricular you can do for your future career. Now, another really fantastic option to explore during your sophomore year is the more entrepreneurial route. Do or build something impressive. Run a pop-up restaurant if you're interested in becoming a chef. Code an impressive game or host a hackathon for high schoolers if you wanna work at Google. Here's something else that no other college YouTuber has mentioned. Colleges will literally throw money at you to do something entrepreneurial. If you have a clear proposal, talk to the right people and search for the right opportunities, I promise you, no, I guarantee that someone somewhere on campus will give you the funding to make your idea happen. Now, um, let's pretend it's the middle of sophomore year and you have absolutely no idea what you're going to do post-grad. Relax. You are not alone. But hopefully at this point, you know what you don't want to do. Maybe your first year you thought about going into medicine or law, but after doing a bunch of mind-numbing bio labs or crying into a constitutional law textbook, you've decided that, well, no, maybe this path is not for me. And that's totally okay, guys. It might feel like other people are ahead of you, but trust me, they're not. This process of figuring stuff out, it happens to everyone. It happened to me and it will happen to you. Going into college, I thought I was interested in economics. Never had a chance to study it in high school. So I took two semesters of micro and macro during my freshman year. Could not stand it at all. Colossal waste of my time and energy. But when I complained about it to one of my senior friends, he gave me some of the best college advice that I still live by to this Day. He said, Kev, knowing what you don't want in life is just as valuable as knowing what you do want. You've blinked four times and suddenly four semesters have passed. Welcome to junior year. And like junior year of high school, junior year of college is intense. It's difficult. It's grueling. But it can also be fun and exciting since now you actually have friends that have seen you at your lowest low and decided that they still kind of like you. Now, building upon the advice from earlier, I'd say that junior year is pretty much your last opportunity to get 
some professional experience. When I was at Yale, there were juniors who stacked their classes on Mondays through Wednesdays, then literally took the train and headed to New York City where they worked at a publishing company or a software engineering firm the other three or four days of the week. I was like, damn, I didn't even know that was a possibility. Now, I know I keep yapping about professional experience and I might come off as a bit capitalistic, workaholic, whatever you wanna call it, but no, I am looking out for you because here's the thing, job hunting is very stressful, more stressful than applying to college, especially if you guys wait until the last minute. I want you guys to be less stressed, to enjoy life, and the way to do that properly is by preparing and starting early. Remember when you waited until your final year of high school to start thinking about college, only to discover that there were kids around you who had been like thinking about college for years? Folks who tend to start earlier do tend to do better. Just saying. Senior year. Senior year is a lot like freshman year because you go back to partying a lot and now you are hanging on, clinging to the safety bubble that is college before you are finally flung into the real world. If I had to give one piece of advice to all those seniors out there, it would be to give back. Find time to help the lost little lambs, the young ones. Why? Because ultimately guys, college is about community. One day you'll look back on all the classes you took and realize that you don't remember a single damn thing. But what you will remember and what you will cherish are the interactions you had with friends or even acquaintances. And trust me when I say life is just really funny, you know? Those people who you thought you'd never ever see again tend to just pop up out of nowhere. I don't mean that as a bad thing, quite the opposite. The people you met once upon a time might swag you with a job or introduce you to a future romantic partner. You never know, guys. You truly never know. All right, this video has gone on long enough. I hope you guys found a few morsels of wisdom here and there, and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to stick around. Let me know what other questions you'd like for me to answer in the comment section below. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your day, your life, your journey. I'm Kevin Zen, and I'll catch you at the next one. Pa -pa 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 Peace.